Last time on HTML Canvas, Radu showed you how to animate by drawing again and again after clearing the canvas at each frame. You learned how to make shapes move and change size using math. Now get ready, next lesson's about to start. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. We begin with the same quick and dirty Canvas project setup. I remind you that if you want to make a real web page, you should follow the advices from lecture one. So now I'm giving my canvas a background of silver. It's just a light gray color that HTML recognizes. And here we start to write JavaScript inside of the script tag. So let's get our canvas to the context quickly like this, because my canvas is a uh, global variable in JavaScript now that we defined it in HTML. And here I want to do something different today. I want to make the canvas more interactive and control things that happen on it using the mouse. So I'm gonna go down here and write add event listener to the canvas. An event listener is something that gets triggered when you do something like move the mouse, click, or maybe use the keyboard or, or something like that. But today we will experiment with mouse move. We will try to do something on the canvas when the mouse is moving. And to do things, we use functions, right? So I'm going to say, let's call this function that we are defining right now when the mouse moves. And as the mouse moves, we also get some information associated with this event. So I'm going to call that information here info. And in this function, I'm going to get the x coordinate of the mouse like this and the y coordinate of the mouse like this. And next, I'm going to just draw a circle at this x, y coordinate. So let's begin path and arc at x and y using a radius of, say, 20 and from 0 to math pi times 2 to get a full circle and stroke. Now, when closing this, you need to be careful. We are not just closing this curly brace from here, but we also need to close this parenthesis from here, like this. So save the file and refresh the page. And now you see the gray canvas there. And when you move the mouse, this crazy thing happens. We are leaving a trail with the mouse. This is how drawing apps are made pretty much. But you also have to use other events like uh, unmouse down to start the drawing, unmouse up to end the drawing and things like that. But really we made a very, very rudimentary drawing app here where our brush is now this, this circle. It's really cool, I think. But uh, I want to actually move the circle with the mouse. So we need to clear the canvas before we redraw the next circle again and again. I'm gonna go here and say ctx clear rect 0, 0 my canvas with my canvas height. So this is gonna clear everything on the canvas before we are redrawing the next circle. Now if I refresh this, you can see that the circle is following the mouse. But you would expect the circle to be exactly centered at the mouse location, and that's not what happens. And the reason for that is that in HTML here, we get a default margin to the side of the browser. And that's somehow affecting this 
info x and info y from here. To fix these, you can change these properties to offset x with capital X and offset y with capital Y. Save the file, refresh, and now the circle is centered exactly at the mouse location. But we are not using the animate function from the last lesson. So the reason this works is because this mouse move event triggers every time you move the mouse, even a little bit. So it also renders many, many times per second if you are moving the mouse. But if your mouse is not moving at all, then the canvas is not redrawn in this case. So I'm going to teach you next how to combine this mouse move with the animate, because sometimes you want to do that. I'll show you why. Let's say that we want the circle to pulse somehow, to increase in radius as well to animate the circle as we are moving it around. So I'm going to go up here and say a minimum radius of 10, same as we did last time, and a range for the radius of 20. And let's use a P again for the percent, how much from the minimum it's going to increase in radius according to the range. And now, uh, I'm just going to go down here in mouse move and say p is equal to p plus 0 0.02 or some value how much we wanted to increase every time we redraw. And if p is greater than 1, let's make it 0. I don't do anything more fancy than that. Then the radius for this circle is going to come from the minimum radius plus the range of the radius multiplied by p, like this. And I need to use this radius here instead of this hard-coded value of 20. So saving this and refreshing, you can see the circle increases now in radius as we are moving the mouse, but if I stop moving, the circle doesn't pulse anymore. And this is maybe not what you want. Well, I don't know, maybe it is what you want, but I don't want it now at least. So I would like this pulsing to happen all the time, even if I don't move the mouse. And this is where you would need to use the animate technique from the last lecture. I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to remove from here this const for x and for y because these are going to be global variables. I'll define them here soon. And I'm going to actually cut all of this code from here. So I'm going to use control x to cut everything. It's still in my clipboard, so I have the code somewhere. I didn't lose it. And here at the top, I'm going to start to define x as, let's say, middle of the canvas by default, and y to the middle of the canvas vertically by default. And these are going to change according to how we move the mouse. So these are now connected. And next, what we are going to do is animate. So let's call our animate function that I'm defining here. And the key element here is request animation frame that is going to call animate again, and then this will cause the infinite loop. And now I'm going to paste here inside of the animate function all the code from previously, like this. And I'm going to save this, refresh, and now you see the circle in the center of the canvas there, so this default 200, 200 coordinate. And when you bring the mouse inside of the screen, it's going to start to follow it like that. So this is now exactly what I wanted to achieve. There are many things that you can do with these event listeners. Here we're just using the mouse and uh, only the way the mouse moves from here. This page really has a lot of examples and I recommend that you check it out to learn more. See you guys.